Good afternoon. Today's battle rhythm is focused on finding solutions for critical needs. Before I introduce our presenters, I'd like to welcome our affiliates and branch communities, Four Star Alliance members, veteran support organizations, and guests. I'm excited to introduce today's subject matter experts. I'd like to welcome Colonel Sam Whitehurst. He's a retired U.S. Army veteran and vice president of the Dixon Center for Military and Veteran Services. I'd also like to welcome Dole McCarthy, who will be speaking about Progressive's Keys to Progress. Jeanette Gillis, the director of America's Warrior Partnerships, The Network, will round out our group for our discussion, finding solutions for critical needs. Throughout the session, please post your questions in the chat box so we can answer them during the presentations and at the question and answer time. Today's session will conclude at three due to the solar eclipse that's taking place today. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Sam to tell us a little bit about the Dixon Center for Military and Veteran Services and to educate us about the Women's Veteran Emergency Financial Assistance Program. Thanks, Jeanette. Okay, here's, uh, before I get into uh, our program that we use to support women veterans, just very quickly, a little bit about Dixon Center uh, for Military and Veteran Services, or just Dixon Center for short. We are a center, so we're not a direct service provider, except for one program, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. But uh, most of our work is focused on those organizations and individuals and communities that want to better integrate uh, the military connected to community, transitioning service members, military spouses, uh, veterans, of course, their families, uh, uh, caregivers and the families of our fallen, those who want to integrate and support those within their programs. We are a center for them to help them more effectively integrate uh, those folks, as well as to increase uh, their impact. Uh, we are a member of the FedCap group, which is a larger conglomerate of nonprofits based in New York City. Um, and we focus on three areas. So you see our three areas here, we call the first one work with purpose, which is uh, focuses on workforce development, career placement and entrepreneurship. Heal with honor fo focuses on health and wellness. And then live with hope focuses on access to affordable housing and also access to basic services. So the program I'm gonna talk about today fits underneath that third focus area, live with hope. And like I said, you can see right in the corner of that slide, we are not a direct service provider, though we do work with those who do provide direct services, whether it's employers, other nonprofits, uh, academic institutions, labor unions, uh, you name it. If there's anyone who wants to, again, to support veterans and their families, we're a resource for them. But we do have one, <laughs> one program, uh, it took me a while to get to that. We do have one program, program that we do use to provide direct services, and that's what I'm going to uh, speak about today. And that's our uh, Women's Veterans uh, Emergency Financial Assistance Program. Uh, so along with support of uh, some of our uh, very loyal donors, uh, we recognized back in 2014 that women veterans face unique challenges during their reintegration. So we established this program to support them and uh, through that reintegration process. Um, for eligible women veterans, and I'll talk more about that here in, in just a second, we can support financial grants up to $2,000, of course, as all of us, when funds, you know, when funds are available. And of course, just like any organization, especially toward the end of the fiscal year, sometimes that becomes a little bit more challenging. But we can support up to $2,000. We don't that's not something we advertise because we want to make sure we're addressing the need of the applicant. So we take a look at the applications and based upon their need, we try to support that. Most of our grants fall into the area of about $1,500. And on a few cases, again, based upon the need, sometimes we have gone over $2,000. Um, but again, we'd rather focus on the needs so we don't necessarily advertise uh, that the kind of what our, our mark is at $2,000. But of course, we share that with our partners who help us support this program. Um, our approach, this is not a handout. Absolutely not a handout. It is a hand up. It is uh, definitely a hand up because along with provi providing the financial grant, uh, maybe more importantly, we connect uh, our applicants to other supportive services. 
Um, a lot of our applicants are not aware of SSVF. Uh, so uh, based upon if that's their particular need and can be addressed through SSVF, we'll connect them with whatever the SF, SSVF grantee is in their community. Um, we also connect them to uh, financial counseling and coaching and other uh, supportive services. Uh, helping us do this, we use the Coordinated Assistance Network. So the Coordinated Assistance Network, is a, as the name uh, describes, is a network. It's an organization that connects a whole host of different support initiatives uh, to different communities, not only veterans uh, or the military-connected community, but but, uh, but anyone who has a particular need that needs to be addressed. But they do place a large focus on the military-connected community. Um, uh, the, if people, When people go to our program, and I'll talk about how to do that, when they apply to our program, they are sent to a, uh, uh, to a portal where they're able to create a profile, where they're able to upload documents, and that's what starts the process. Uh, and of course, we can see all that, and that's what starts the process to review their application, uh, and then also to deliver uh, the services to to them at some point. Um, some of the requirements: uh, one is obviously create the profile on the Coordinated Assistance Network portal, and I'll show you how to get to that from our web website here in just a second. Uh, of course, we need a DD two fourteen copies of all bills. Uh, and really a full picture of their finances to include any income and debt. Because we take that, we don't have kind of a hard and fast number that we look at for income, income level, uh, but based upon kind of looking at their debt to income ratio, um, from that we make a decision. Sometimes, you know, quite frankly, we have not been able to support it because the, uh, the person's income far and exceeds uh, what they should be able to uh, uh, manage or in order to pay their bills. And so in those cases, we'll definitely refer them maybe to financial counseling or coaching or counseling, but it's not something necessarily a grant is going to solve. Um, eligibility, any woman veteran from any era, so it doesn't have to be post 9-11, uh, any, any uh, woman veteran from any era, regardless of characterization of service. So really the thing that we need to get the ball rolling is that DD214, proving that they have served. And then from there, we, you know, we take it from there. We get a good picture of what they need, what their needs are, and then from there move out to see how we can address. Everyone, whether you get a grant or not, is referred. So everyone has access to these other supportive services, whether or not they qualify for a grant or not. Um, just real quick, here's kind of some uh, uh, frequently asked questions we get about the program. What can we support? I won't go through each of those. Uh, you can see those uh, listed there. I think many of you who, who are service providers are probably well, have lists which are very similar uh, as well. Um, I would. The only thing I'll say about the list is uh, our number one request is some type of assistance with whether it's with rent or with a mortgage that by far kind of outpaces our other requests. I think number two is usually utilities. Uh, and then number three usually uh, is uh, involves car repair. I do have, I will show a slide at the end. It kind of shows a history of the program, kind of where a lot of our focus has been on in, in addressing uh, some of those needs. Um, how often can people apply? It's a one-time grant. Uh, now, we, like I said, we always make referrals. So even if we have someone who comes back to us who has received a grant in the past, while we can't provide another grant, we will continue to make referrals and try to connect them to services uh, that, uh, that can support them. Um, and our goal, how long does this take? Um, we shoot for a week. Uh, now, that, as I was talking with Jeanette and Allison on Friday, that's, that's, that's usually when everything lines up just right. We have all the right paperwork, all the questions are answered. Um, and we have also support from the organization that's gonna be receiving uh, the grant. Um, I was telling Jeanette and Allison, and some of you may have also dealt with this. Like we sometimes have a devil of a time trying to convince the organization that's gonna receive the funds, whether it's a rental agency, uh, whether that's a lender, whether that's a uh, automotive repair shop, whoever's going to receive the money, we, we have a tough time explaining to them 
that you know that the W nine really is not a big deal. Just give us your tax ID number so we can uh, make sure we keep track of uh, of of the grant itself. Um, so that's our goal. Our goal is to have it delivered uh, within a week. Uh, it does sometimes take longer because sometimes we get hiccups uh, along the way. And we just move this over. And then points of contact. Uh, anyone that you refer to us, I encourage you, uh, please refer them to our website. Um, but if any of you, if any of the organizations have questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our program man manager is Sarah Heidenheimer. That's her email there. Or contact me. Too easy. Uh, if you have any questions about the program, uh, I was talking with Sarah this morning, and she uh, she gets questions from organizations who are making referrals all the time. So feel free to reach out to Sarah or to reach out uh, to myself if you have any questions. But again, any applicants, I would ask that you direct them to our website and let them, and so they get to the CAN portal, and then they can start to build their profile and, and take it from there. And then, and then I. Last, lastly, I just thought this was interesting. I was talking with Jeanette and Allison about this on Friday. This is just a quick snapshot of kind of where most of our support has gone to. Uh, now, I don't think uh, um, I don't think there's probably any surprises here. I was I, in preparing for this. I was going back and looking at a heat map on where most women veterans are located, and this pretty much aligns with that. Um, but as I was explaining to Allison and Jeanette on Friday. Uh, there's also some organizations out there who are aware of us, and they tend to use us a lot. So especially in the Virginia area, we, I know that the Virginia Veterans Office uh, sends many referrals to us. So you may see kind of an outsized focus in that area just because there's organizations who know about our program and will tend to refer people uh, uh, to our program uh, for support. Uh, but again, you know, you can look at this at your leisure. It's, it, I know it's probably tough to see uh, on the computer screen, but it just kind of breaks down kind of what the average age is of who we support by location, as well as what are the critical needs. And as, as I listed earlier, rent mortgage is usually number one, followed by utilities, and then followed by automotive repair. And then lastly, uh, this is a screen uh, shot of our website, DixonCenter.org. You just go to that. You see the blue button, Resources for Veterans. The applicant clicks on that. It takes them to our, our uh, uh, Women's Veteran Program. They click on that, and it takes them to the CAM portal where they can start to build their profile. Uh, Penny, I didn't know if you want to wait for questions at the end, Jeanette, or however you like to hand it, but, uh, but yeah, that, that concludes my briefing. All right. I don't think we have any um, specific questions yet, but thank you, Sam, for that presentation. And the network is certainly excited to learn about a new financial assistance um, resource. So we really appreciate you for being here and sharing that. Please, um, before we move on to our next presenter, please keep in mind that we're going to do questions and answers after. So please, uh, if you have something that you want to ask, stick it in the chat and we will get that question addressed for you. Now I would like to pass the presentation over to Doyle to introduce himself and share some information about the Keys to Progress program. Doyle? Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. I appreciate that and I'm glad I got to follow Sam because our program is, is fairly similar, but, but we're looking at, um, so I'm with the Keys to Progress program. I'm Doyle McCarthy. I've been working with their Keys to Progress executive board since about 2015. Um, today, I have Catherine Ray with me as well. She's on the call. She may pop in and say hi. Um, she may not, but we're both available to, to be reached out to. At, at the end, I'll provide email addresses and additional information. So if you have questions afterwards, I'm available. But again, the Keys Progress program has been around since 2013. It's, it's our way of giving back to those who have given so much. Um, people that have been in the military, um, veterans, and we're just trying to help out veterans in need who need, who need daily transportation, really, and that either can't afford it, have a car that's not running well. But we're excited about our program because to date, we've given away over a thousand vehicles since 2013. We do this by giving away vehicles um, on a one day we have a one-day giveaway event uh, this year. It's November 14th. It's usually the week around Veterans Day. 
So we're excited this year for our November 14th day. Um, it, our events primarily take place at various progressive offices and enterprise locations around the U.S. We work with enterprise very closely as we buy all of our vehicles from them for these giveaways. Our goal is to give away up to 80 vehicles in all 50 states. We gave away vehicles in all 50 states last year and we gave away about 75 vehicles. Um, 70, 70, 75 of these vehicles should be individual um, recipients who are in need of transportation. And five of these vehicles will be commercial vehicles that we give away to veteran owned businesses or non nonprofit or charitable organizations with a veteran focus. We started that giveaway program for the, for the, uh, the commercial lines or the business oriented or the nonprofit um, organizations about three years ago. And that's really been successful. We've given away over, I believe 20, 25 vehicles to nonprofits charities and uh, veteran owned businesses throughout the country. Um, those are really special to us as well. Uh, like I said, it's a one day event. So there's so many progressive people that are involved in this program, in these giveaway events at the different locations. And we'd love to celebrate our military and the veterans that were helping and assisting. Um, so here's a little bit of application information. And I know I talked about this a little bit last year. Our application process has changed this year. It's all online. We won't be emailing applications or I won't be emailing ap applications or Catherine or anyone else. It'll be through the program um, and through this, this site. This site will actually send you an email on its own and everything will be completed online now. It used to be pretty much mailed in. Um, so two different formats here, like I said, the personal transportation support, our hope is to offer some relief to military men and women to their lives when they're facing challenges with transportation. Um, this allows them to have transportation employment for their family, for their kids, to go to school. And so many needs that we can help them with with providing them a vehicle. Uh, the application portal this year is from April to Friday, August 2nd. And this is the email address um, that you can find the application at. The commercial vehicle needs, like I've said, veteran focused organizations and businesses, nonprofits, charities, organizations such as that. The window is the same and to obtain the application is the same as well. Um, if you do have questions on this, just let me know. You can raise your hand or I can answer them at the end as well. So um, there are quite a few application requirements. I'm gonna move on to this page. I have included a QR. This code will take you to our external progressive keys to progress site and it will answer a lot of questions you may have and also provide this information as well. This information is taken right off of that site. These are the eligibility requirements for the personal transportation support, not necessarily the commercial transportation support. And, and really my, uh, um, why I want to be here today is to connect with you and you, you work, for, work for organizations that help veterans. Our biggest obstacle with Keys to Progress is finding veterans who need transportation. It's, it's awfully hard for us to find them on our own. We have to work through organizations, nonprofits, veteran-owned businesses to find these individuals. And we ask that you, the organization, help us find them and sponsor them as well. Um, if you have questions, if you're an organization and you have questions, I'm available. This QR code will answer a lot of questions as well. Uh, again, I'll provide my email address here at the end and also Catherine's as well. So you can see here that these are the following categories to be eligible. You have to be a military veteran with a DD-214, an active duty E-4 or lower, spouse of an active duty E-4 or lower, military member who is overseas or a gold star status family. Um, and as a matter of fact, we've given away a couple of vehicles to Gold Star nonprofit organizations or organizations that were 
owned or operated by Gold Star families and mothers. And as you can imagine, those are tremendous events as well. You have to have a, they have to have a household annual income below 250% of the federal poverty guidelines. What does that mean? Can be confusing, I know. So for, a, for an individual, that amount is around $37,000, $38,000. For a family of four in the household, that amount is around $78,000 or under. So, um, and you can find that online too, if you have additional questions on poverty, federal poverty guidelines. Have a clean driving record. So no major infractions in the past seven years. Does not own a vehicle or is, or is able to demonstrate an existing hardship with a current vehicle. Um, also be able to provide their most recent federal income tax filing or current benefits statement. We'll be asking for all of this information and they're going to have to provide all of this info to us. Um, be at least 18 years of age or 19 in a couple states and be a legal resident of the 50 U.S. states or D.C. Um, and the applicant needs to apply through a nonprofit organization. I know I said that as well, but if you have someone who would like to apply, if you can work with them and just get them to uh, to either talk with you about it, you send them the email address, or you just sponsor them. I believe there may be a line for a sponsor in there as well. Um, we also will take some applications from individuals as well. They'll just need to find a nonprofit to, to sponsor them. So um, we're really excited this year about it. The application window is open. So if you know anyone who you think may be needing transportation and may meet these requirements, if you can go to one of these email addresses and help them out through that, if, if you're interested in it, if your nonprofit organization is interested in it as well, uh, we'd be willing to and happy to chat with you about that too. The QR code will take you to the, uh, the site and it will also provide you the application for the commercial vehicle needs as well. There will be a different requirements in there for those. They're fairly, they're, they're very similar. Of course, the, uh, some of it is a little bit different, but it is really similar. And here, if anyone has questions, I'm willing and able to take questions at this point. And I have Catherine here to help me as well, if, if she's available. Anybody have any questions? It looks like we have one, and so okay. this might be one that can go to both of you. And the question is, are there any tips to increasing the odds of getting selected? Yes, there will be. There will be part of the application. To, it's going to ask you um, a little bit about you, basically. It's going to ask about your needs, um, about your desires. It's going to ask about you, the applicant what you've been doing, what you want to do with the vehicle. Um, and, and I think the, I think the more in depth of the story that you provide in the application, the more meaningful it's going to be to our rubric and to the people who are, we have, we have a committee choosing the recipients. So that, that's a key part of it. It's, it's almost like an essay, but you're basically talking about yourself and what you're going to do with your vehicle, what you've done since you've been out of the military, maybe what you've done while you were in the military, just a little bit about you and just tell us about your story. Okay. We have, um, and let me um, ask Sam the same question. Are there any tips that um, folks can use to increase their odds of getting approved for the women veteran program? Yeah. Yeah. I, I prioritize their needs. So uh, sometimes we get called kind of this back and forth. We'll get their application and it had, and, and, and someone who's requesting finan emergency financial assistance normally has more than one need they're trying to address. So we want to know what all those needs are, but we need to understand what their number one top priority is. That, that will streamline the process and increase the speed of delivery. So in a lot of ways, it sounds like both of them really need an, a good story. Why does the person have, who are they? Why do they have this need? And what will this need do for them? Acquiring absolutely. this, what will it do for them? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. 
All right, so please keep that in mind when you're uh, writing up your request for these programs, make sure the person details those things. Um, the second question is from Gina at the Permian Warrior Partnership. She has a question for you, Doyle. She wants to know, do you have handicap or wheelchair accessible vehicles? That's an interesting one. We have given away a couple of vehicles um, for people with disabilities. We worked with Travis Mills Foundation out of Maine and gave away two vehicles to him. One was a, a wheelchair accessible van. If, if you do have someone in need of a vehicle um, similar to that or in, with that description, please put that in the request, in the application, write it in the basically the the essay piece of it on what your needs are and we will look at that request and follow up i can say that i'm it, it, it is a possibility i will say that okay. um and Jeanette, if, if i could jump in just uh, to add one more, yeah one more bit uh i don't i don't want anyone to have the impression that we just focus on one need and then for example if someone's got a challenges with a mortgage or rent and also has a challenge with their car that we're not we're just going to blow off the car and focus on the rent what we'll do is we may focus on one of their needs but we'll use our other partners within the coordinated assistance network who can maybe address some of those other challenges so we want to know everything that's going on but understand what their priority is so that you can help coordinate things. yes absolutely yeah excellent Excellent. Um, okay, we've got another question for you, Doyle. Um, should the participants yeah. provide any photos? Actually, that could go to both of you. Do photos help in the application? I, I'm not sure there's going to be availability within the application to attach photos or provide photos. If there is, then sure, by all means, uh, go ahead and attach them. If, if there is that ability. I have my doubts, but there may be. I haven't seen the new application online yet it just came out actually yeah and no, no photos are necessary yeah we, we don't we don't take photos either sometimes depending on the complexity of the situation we'll reach out and whether it's over telephone or through email we'll get to know the applicant but no photos are necessary okay yeah, yeah there's definitely not necessary for us us either so okay Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question for you, Doyle. Um, how many vehicles do you anticipate giving away this year? Uh, 70 to 80. Seven. That's what we're, our, our goal is 75 personal vehicles and five commercial vehicles. We're also giving away a semi truck, but that's a oh, wow. giveaway. But so our many, goal is 80. How many applicants do you typically receive? I think last year we may have received around 300. 3,000? Maybe, maybe three to 400. Oh, three to 400. Okay. Yes. So the chances of getting selected are, are, are pretty, pretty decent. They're pretty good. Yeah. When, if, for the people who complete the full application with DD214 and all of, <clears throat> all of the information needed, yeah, they're, they're, they're usually pretty good, depending on the amount of applicants we get this year. Okay, that's that's good to know. Really good to know. Um, does anybody else have a question? We'll pause just for a few seconds. We can get another question in. All right. I think you two have done such an excellent job of presenting your information that it doesn't leave any room for questions. I think we're completely under... Oh, here we go. Tiana has a question. She's in Alaska. Would this would this create a barrier to eligibility for either program? So Alaska veterans, any issues with that? No issues. No issues here. No. Okay. No issues with us. The the poverty guidelines actually move up a little bit for Alaska, but we've we've given away vehicles in Alaska. I believe we gave away vehicles in Alaska last year and the year before. Fabulous. That's great. I know Alaska, we, we've had several, at least when I was helping with Alaska cases, we had numerous veterans that struggled with transportation there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a rough climate, kind of hard on the vehicles. So. Any other yes. questions? Thank you, Tiana, for that one. That was good. Any other ones? Okay. So what that, 
That leaves us with a little bit more time for our, the second half of our program. Thank you, Sam and Doyle, for your great presentations. I'm very excited. Thank you so to much. Learn. Yes, I'm excited to yeah. learn about the new program we've got, and I'm excited also to learn more information about the new 2024 um, Keys to Progress process. So today, instead of our traditional breakout, we're going to take the next 25, 30 minutes to do a brainstorming for solutions activity. And Allison is going to help us with that. So Allison, I'm going to bring you on board. During the registration, you were asked critical issues that you were interested in seeing. Allison's going to start off the activity by entering a few issues from the registration. Please raise your hand if you would like to offer a solution that you have seen in the community or have heard about. Allison is also going to talk to us about the Elks Lodge for one-time financial assistance. All right. Yes. Allison, we'd be talking to you if Alice could figure out how to get her her camera to start sharing again. Well, all right. it must be the eclipse. That's it has it to be. It has to be. Yes, that messes um, up. Totally. We had run into in a situation just recently, and in a positive note, this is kind of in the whole term of knowing your community better. Um, because a lot of services, while there are many national programs, there's a lot of local programs too. And there's no way I can know every local program. But I did run into one recently, the Elks Club, which you would think, you know, we ne not necessarily think would be just like so focused on veterans, but they have a, a number of veteran programs in locally. And some of their programs they have are offering like um, emergency financial assistance to veterans that are within their their um, local area. So if you're a service provider and you don't have a friend in the Elks Club, you might want to go and kind of get to know those pre people at the Elks Club and know who's there because they do have, they do provide a lot of services for veterans and financial assistance is one that they, they can provide. Um, it changes from state to state, so it's really important that you know who your local person is and your local club members. And if I may jump in um, just to uh, add to what Allison is saying, we did have a veteran recently who through Allison's contacts with the Elks Club had some different sort of needs and we were able to utilize the Elks Club resources um, in order to help that veteran. And so that was thanks to Allison's contacts, she was able to help Crystal another part of our team with that case and get some of that resolved. So that was a great find. And we encourage any of you that if you need the Elks Club to reach out to them. So Jeanette, th that financial assistant has, has, is one of those ones that came up a lot on our um, registration. Would you happen to have any other suggestions or is anybody out there have that would um, either want to put it in the chat or type in some suggestion that they have seen um, locally or nationally? Let, let me, um, here's someone saying that the Elks Club is amazing in New Jersey. They helps with home furnishings. So furniture, not homes for homeless veterans transitioning to permanent housing. Whoa. Okay. That's another uh, shout out to the Elks Club. That's fabulous. Thank you for sharing that, Terry. Um, so financial assistance. Um, well, what we do here at the Network for Financial Assistance, I'll just jump in with that really quickly while some of you are also thinking of what you would like to share. Um, when we get a case for a veteran, the first thing the Network team does is we look at where the veteran lives, what is their, the county that they live in. Then we're going to start with the local programs. We're going to start with the area, um, I'm sorry, the community action agencies. We're going to look at the SS. BF um, programs. We're going to look at any churches that we can find on 211 that might be offering financial assistance and really drill down and get them connected to those local resources. Sometimes there are programs through the, the, the Veteran Service Office. They can connect us to the DAV or some other little veteran programs there in the area. And then we're also spread out to look regionally. So, um, I'll, I'll end with that and let somebody else jump in and then I'll talk about some national things also. Well, please be, please people, um, if you will, put barriers or critical needs, sorry, that you have seen in your communities and we can throw them out to the whole entire group to for solutions. Um, 
one of those things, Jeanette, that we talked about, this ties back to local. Um, you had talked about, and you just mentioned churches. So I know that car repair is sometimes a, a real, it's a real critical, obviously, if you have a car and you can't get it repaired, then that's a big issue, right? And most of the time, people don't want to to necessarily fix a car, but their their needs exist there, right? Um, can you talk about, you were telling me about like an option that you've seen locally that maybe um, other places could encourage it to get started in their community. Right, right. Okay, so Gina is um, offering some ideas and these are really great because it's a perfect jump off into what Allison's wanting me to talk about. So the Lions Club, um, the Rotary Clubs are great and churches. Um, here in the Augusta area, we have Catholic Social Services, which is a church um, and, a, and a Baptist church. Both of those churches will offer financial assistance if you reach out to them. They have a, pro a process, but we also have a church that has a program called Mechanic Ministry. And that program, you can actually uh, apply to get a donated vehicle and they will... Um, it, it, people donate vehicles to them and they rehab them and then they donate them to the community uh, depending, you know, they have an application process, but they donate those to, to the community. And that's been a really wonderful resource for us here. So I'd encourage any of you who, um, you know, want to have something like that in your local community to, to think about starting that uh, mechanic ministry type program because it's really been helpful for the local folks in this area. Terry says that in North Jersey, there's an unmet needs fund through SOS Vets. Yeah, mm -hmm. unmet needs, that's another program through, um, gosh, I'm blanking on who that's with. There's a there's another, there's quite a few of those. Um, support the enlisted project in San Diego, Orange County and Washington State for Assistance Foundation for Women Warriors covers California and Virginia for women oh. and the Kiwanis Club. Wow, lots and lots and lots of ideas there. And a lack of social connection upon entering civilian life. Yeah, that's a huge barrier. We see that quite a bit here in the network with folks that are getting out and they had a community when they were in the military and then they get out and they're just sort of on their own, sometimes feeling a little bit lost and contact us because they're having some mental health issues with that feeling of disconnection. Um, I know in um, some of our our um, on branches, like um, a Permian Warrior Partnership, I, some of them are owned today. They have started like with a local, with a local group doing some coffee get togethers that social connection is so important for veterans for everybody but and and really also for the older veterans sometimes that get really disconnected to their to their community and and kind of we need to bring them in um is there i think there's gina could you speak a little bit about the coffee um clubs that you guys got going on yes ma'am um, so we have a once a month coffee event for our veterans. It's free and we actually get a lot of them sponsored um, and we get the donuts for free. Um, we've had event places that have catered to them for free. The coffee places themselves have offered their spaces for free. Um, we have other people that partner with us offering spaces. We had recently a in-home healthcare um, that sees a lot of veterans. Um, they offered their space. We had a VSO who has connections in our small town, um, offer space and coffee. Um, it's been really successful and it's, you know, in Midland and Odessa, and we just started it here in New Mexico. And we're going to, you know, add on to some of these other smaller towns, like the town of Seminole, in addition to Hobbs and Carlsbad and Midland and Odessa. Um, but we, we get quite a turnout um, in the Midland Odessa ones. And even for our first one in Hobbs, I think we had 11 people wow. show up for the first one. So that was pretty good. And we we get a lot of people, you know, wanting, excited for the next one. So 
And keep in, keep in mind that, you know, lack of social connection, that's not just, you know, wanting to hang out with people. It, it can, for some folks, become a real mental health issue, that lack of connectivity to other people. It can, it can really, loneliness is, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a real mental health problem for, for a lot of folks. So keep, keep that in mind that it's not a light thing, that social connection piece. Sam, you had something that you wanted to share? Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, well, first of all, I appreciate Christine for bringing this up because I do think that's probably, that's the number one or number two issue uh, affecting our veterans and their families is that lack of social connection connections. Um, and the, so I don't know, a, a solution I've seen is very similar to what we were talking about with financial assistance is focusing on the community, is going into those communities where that veteran is, um, and finding those organizations that have volunteer opportunities. There's some, you know, obviously there's some great national organizations that have chapters, local chapters across the country, Team Red, White, and Blue, Travis Manion Foundation, Mission Continues, I could go on and on. But just finding where those local chapters are or finding where those community-based organizations are that have volunteer opportunities. And, uh, and in fact, not just veterans, I wish all of us, veterans and non-veterans alike, did more of this because I think the isolation and disconnection is not just something unique to the veteran community, though it is, it is definitely present, but it's something that we, we all could focus a little bit more on wellness, uh, on the eight dimensions of wellness, focusing on that, and you can do that through that those social connections. One thing, if I may add, too, um, with about the coffee events, it's, you know, not just them coming together and meeting other people, um, and sharing their stories and things like that. But often, you know, we have other things, you know, they get to talk to us and kind of build a relationship, um, trust and find more about what we do for them. And like I said, at the last one that we had, we had um, our first one, we actually had a, that home in care, they actually had a table there and our VSO um, showed up and he had offered to do help do paperwork and things with people. So it was a good opportunity to not only come in and talk with people, but they could see and, and build relationships, not only within the community and know people cared, um, but also, you know, to find resources, opportunities through us and volunteers. We have a couple of people that want to volunteer um, with our organization and, you know, just be, be known through that too. That sounds wonderful. That, that really does. I think you're, you're providing something that's just so, so valuable there. Thank you. So Heather Ke Kelly says that Travis Manion Foundation, we have 35 volunteer led chapters across the country that plan service projects, have blended events, social opportunities to build community. We encourage folks to join the mission and she's put up the, the website there and they'll receive an email back from their local Travis Manion Foundation staff member or their chapter leader, if there's one in the area, if it's not one in the area. So thank you for that, um, Heather. I will make sure that that gets added to the after action as well. So Tiana Friedman from Alaska, she says, this is a program I've uh, recently learned about that and it may not be well known within the VA that can assist in transition phase two. Um, Tiana, can you tell us a little bit about what you know about the program? Or Jeanette, do you know more I, than I do? Um, so I don't, it's one that I've met the gentleman once that is up here in Alaska. Um, and from my understanding, so when they are starting to transition out of the military, they'll connect with them and they kind of just help them guide through that first year of being out of service. So they contact him. I think he said they try to contact him at least every two months and just do like check-ins and see what areas they need help navigating. Um, they help them with the VA stuff too. So it is navigating the VA, which is a hard thing for a lot of people. Um, so they help with that. They kind of just help them along the way to make them understand what is available to them too. Well, you know, that, that that's awesome. I'll, I'll check that out as well. I know I, we've talked uh, in the past about Onward Ops, which uh, it's a great program that's being offered through the VA, but Onward Ops, um, what they have is they are going into military installation and when they find out where people are, are transitioning to, they will connect them to a mentor in that community, which means 
they need a lot of mentors in a lot of communities around the country. So if you have veterans that are out there that want to volunteer and want, and if you and your organization want to get more con, uh, connected with that program, it's I'll put it um, in the after action in the chat, but Onward, Onward Ops is a great opportunity for people in the community who want to volunteer and help mentor and transitioning veterans that come into the community. And it's, and it's it actually, it's nice because we don't necessarily know who is coming into our community unless there is a program like that. So it's a good connection from the military to civilian. Jeanette, um, did you have something else? You were like kind of nodding your head and I was like, okay. No, I like, I, I, I like it. I think these, all of these programs are really good. Um, if you don't have a sponsor in your area as a transitioning veteran, then you often get referred to the network and we kind of act in that, in that role. But if you're someone who wants to, um, mentor a veteran so they kind of do both they do the mentoring and the mentee you can go to ets sponsorship and sign up to do a training and become one of the mentors that help transitioning service members well it's surprising because that's actually the onward ops is their new name so when ah. i said so okay. they had because it, it was more inclusive of all branches of service they decided that they needed to, to change their name to be more inclusive so ah. it's recently have that name change. So um, we're talking about the same program. It's a great program. And hopefully more people will, they need, they need mentees, men, people who are mentors, sorry, um, to help with all the people that are coming out of the, of the branches. So um, how about anything else? What about other critical needs? What have we got going on? So Sam says, I encourage everyone to watch the film Mending the Line. It's on Netflix now and really demonstrates the importance of social connectedness for our military, military connected community. Oh, thank you, Sam. I will, I will go watch that. It sounds, I'm always looking for, for good informational programs and I like my Netflix. So, so we, some, some of it kind of got brought out earlier, but also in the registration, there was a, a lot of um, a couple of people said that they were having trouble finding services in rural areas. Now, well, while well, that's you kind of like, you know, that's a trickier area because a it's rural, right? It's hard to find resources. Jeanette, would you happen to have any suggestions for people who are trying to find resources for veterans in rural areas? Sure. Um... So in, in rural areas, it really depends on what you're looking for. But in rural areas, um, keep in mind that there are a handful of things that are present in every count that are resources that are available in every county across the United States. One of them is the Area Agency on Aging. So if you have an elderly veteran and or family that needs some support, the Area Agency on Aging has a plethora of resources to include friendly visitors. Some uh, And some of them vary just depending on the community. But sometimes they have friendly visitor programs where just a volunteer can come into the home and just visit someone. They have home health aides. They have respite programs. They have folks that can help. Um, people sign up for Medicaid if they're eligible, and that Medicaid can be used for long-term care, short-term care, those different so sorts of things. So Area Agency on Aging is really, really good if you're working with elderly people. They also sometimes coordinate with VA resources. Um, they, they And Meals on Wheels is also great for shut-ins or people that have trouble uh, transporting back and forth uh, or, or just getting out of the house. You also have food banks. Food Some food banks will do... Um, boxes for elderly people. So they'll just bring them to their home and deliver meals. Uh, you also have uh, for rural communities, the community action agencies, they oftentimes have financial resource uh, programs and housing and things like that, even home repair. The thing to keep in mind with rural communities is that sometimes you may have um, like an area agency on aging may cover seven counties or, or, or you know, a, a large area. Just because they cover a large catchment area doesn't mean that there aren't robust services there. So be sure to check out that and, and make sure you're connecting with those. Um, and then at times when we get cases from rural communities here in the network, 
we do what we can to connect locally, but if there's nothing locally, then there are all sorts of national programs that can be accessed. The national programs understand if a veteran lives in a rural area and there's nothing there, we can just, when we're presenting the case to them, we just explain that there's nothing, we've reached out to everything that exists and nothing addresses that particular need. And then we can get help on the national level. Um, some of our programs, just off the top of my head, our new friends, Sam, with the Women Veterans Program, we've got Hope for the Warriors, um, you got uh, Gary Sinise Foundation, Honor Bound, Operation Second Chance, um, TRIA, just, just a wide variety of different organizations out there that can support veterans who live in places where there's nothing um, available for them. Did that answer that, Allison? Yes, you did. You did. Um, thank you. Um, I know that you know there are a ton of critical needs, and and there's sometimes there's not a lot of answers to. Like childcare is often one that there's just not a lot of answers to. Um, I know that there's thing that your local churches a lot of times are the best opportunity to find support sometimes for some of the critical needs that are that are that people struggle to find connections with. But do you have any, For I mean, childcare is one of those we've discussed in the past, like just the, the basic needs for that. Do you have any answers for them for that? I have some weak answers. So okay. these, are not, <laughs> these are not robust. There are, um, there are churches that do Mother's Day Out programs. Um, those are sometimes affordable. They're oftentimes not more than five hours a day. And sometimes they only do four days a week. You also have, um, if the veteran is receiving any kind of social services, there are sometimes social services will do child care for recipients who are going back to work. So they will offer child care credits if you're if you're going back to work. Um, I know that the, YWC, the YMCA in some communities have child care assistance programs, um, but child care is, is a huge one. And, um, there's a lot of people that are looking at that and trying to figure out how we can make that better. But child care is very expensive, as it should be. We want the people that are taking care of our children to be, um, you know, to know what they're doing and to be experienced and have some training. And also we want to pay them a living wage. But that it, at the same time, that means that folks that maybe are also only making minimum wage has a, ha, uh, are not able to access those services. So it's kind of a catch-22 and I know a lot of communities are trying to figure that out. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, Dole, um, Sam had mentioned, like, I believe, Sam, in your presentation, you talked about how um, more, I think, rent and mortgage tends to be the most, um, like, for women veterans that were coming in, that was the greatest need, or well, the most often requested. Is that, that is true, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 rent, mortgage, utilities number two and then uh uh car repair and then other other challenges yes yeah and Jeanette are you seeing the same thing at and at the level at the network level uh the rent and mortgage yeah we the the most most of our cases are rent utilities we get we get a lot for car repair uh car bank payments you call car insurance um rent utilities you know, fortunately, we've got some other resources for that, which is SSVF and HUD VASH can be, you know, really great resources for rent utility. Car repair, sometimes that's a real hard one. Uh, um, and what another really hard one is when you're trying to get a car out of impound, if someone's car has been repossessed, and then you're trying to get that back. Uh, that's really uh, challenging. There's not a lot of resource for that. But, um, but yeah, we do get a lot for rent and mortgage. So what are you guys seeing in the community um, as far as what needs are you struggling with? Um, as, uh, you can put them in your chat, if you will, um, see if we get some people that have some. Yeah, and, and while people are doing that, Allison, I would just say I, to Jeanette's comments, um, uh, a lot of the folks we deal with don't know about SSVF. And so that that's always, the, you know, if it is a rent or a mortgage issue and it looks like they're at the a risk of becoming homeless, that's our first go-to is inform them about SSVF, explain the program to them. And of course, you know, everyone, there's an SSVF grantee in every community. So it's connecting them with those, with those folks. Well, 
I appreciate I it's it's we're looking at three and I'm I'm not seeing a lot of of more inf things coming in so I'm thinking we're going to call it as a solar eclipse day and we got to sound off a little early but I wanted to in, to really encourage you everybody who's attending you know we have the network with Jeanette Gillis we also have Sam Whitehurst with the Dixon Center both of those organizations are here to assist you if you need assistance so with your veterans. So please you know, take advantage of, of these programs that are out there for your veterans. And, you know, we can all, it really takes a community. I think this year, our tag, our, our upcoming symposium, our line mo motto is together we can do better. And it really is going to take all of us together to do better. So with that being said, I'm going to um, stop. I think Jeanette said there are a lot of mental health apps that can help people too. Yes, you're very right. So um, and even the VA had a lot of mental health apps that, that are free for anybody to use. Actually, I downloaded a few of them. Um, you know, and I'm not a veteran. So there you can anybody can access them. So yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, Sam. I was going to say, and I'm just outside of Charlotte and it just got really dark all of a sudden. So oh. that's oh. pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. At the same time. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to, oh, I didn't mean to do that right quick. I wanted to share um, one more time. I wanted to share our last thank you and to let you know, well, I'll just talk about it since I, since I can't find it to share it with everybody. But I want to thank you all. Thank Sam and Dole for being here again and sharing your informative information, <laughs> giving us such a great presentation and give us so much information. And also I want to thank you all in the participants today for um, being here and collaborating and sharing. America's Warrior Partnership ultimate goal is to improve the life of veterans and end suicide by empowering local communities to know their veterans and serve them holistically before a crisis occurs. America's Warrior Partnership's model community integration amplifies local efforts by bringing together veteran serving organizations to bridge the gaps in available services and con by connecting local groups to national resources. We believe that communities are best equipped to improve the quality of life for veterans. We hope that today's battle rhythm provided you with powerful insights, best practices, new partners, and tools to do just that. The next battle rhythm on May 6th will focus on current and pending veteran legislation. We hope you all can attend. That's on May 6th. Thank you. Guys, go enjoy this solo eclipse and have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.